Hello and welcome, this is Cheryl. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to use this This Tall stamp set that's in collaboration between Spellbinders and House Mouse Designs. Spellbinders was kind enough to send me this stamp to create with and share my projects with you. Now I'm gonna be coloring this image in a different way for me. I'm gonna be using masking magic sheets. Now typically when I color images, my go-to is either using Copic markers or doing some watercolor. I tend not to do a lot of coloring with dye-based markers because I don't like the fact that the paper pills so quickly. But it's easy enough to use dye-based ink pads, and that's where these masking sheets come in play. Now this technique is much easier if you're only using it to color in the focal image. Here I'm going to be using it to color the background as well because I thought a nice deep background would really make those characters pop off. So I stamped my image with stays on onto some hammer mill cardstock and I'm also stamping it with stays on onto the masking sheets. Now the stays on is important for the masking sheets only because it's a permanent ink and it's going to dry nice and quickly for the ink blending and my basic image on my card. It doesn't necessarily need to be the stays on, just whatever ink you like to use. Now, before starting to cut by masking magic sheets, I did take some glossy accents and a really fine tip bottle, and I put it over top of the eyes on my focal image. This is going to resist any of the ink blending that I'm doing, and it's also going to give those mice some nice beady eyes, and I love that look for them. So I'm, while that is drying over to the side, I'm using my cutter beast scissors and I'm cutting the outside lines of my image. This is the hardest part of this project. There is a lot of detail cutting involved and I know that's not necessarily everyone's cup of tea, but it's one of those things for this project, the more precise you are, the better results you're gonna get. Now I ended up not doing as much cutting as I should have at the beginning and that means in the middle of my project, I do need to peel off some of these masking sheets and do a little bit of cutting. I had chose at the beginning to do these two mice, the pencil and the ruler, all as one piece. And what I really should have done is cut the ruler apart, cut the different pieces of the pencil apart as well. It just would have made the project go a little bit smoother in that um, part of the project, but I just didn't think of it at the time. Another option would be to stamp this twice, and I actually did end up stamping this twice, but I only used one of them, and then doing the different parts with the two different sheets. Now these sheets are like a post-it note, so you can put them right over top of your image, do your ink blending, and then they come off super easy. And you can also let those the ink dry on them and then put the backing right back on and use them a couple times. It really just depends on how saturated they get with the ink. I find if I do them for a technique with ink sprays, they don't necessarily last quite as long because the spray is quite wet. But if you do it for something like this, you can use it several times if you want to. Now I'm masking off the parts of the image that I don't want inked at this point. So right now I'm working from back to front. So I'm inking the wall in the back behind these mice. And you'll see as I work through this project that I do my whole image from back to front. I think about what's behind different things and those are the next sections that I'm gonna do. So I'm gonna do the wall first, then the floor, and then I'm gonna do the ruler, the pencil, and then the little mice. So I'm using some Distress inks for the background. I'm using some Speckled Egg, Mermaid Lagoon, and Uncharted Mariner. And I love these dark tealy tones and I wanted to have something that was gonna be a really nice contrast to the brown color that I'm going to be using for the mice. I wanna make sure that it's something that's totally different from them so that they show off and that they really shine in this. You could leave this whole background uh, white and not color it if you didn't want to, but I just thought might as well do the whole thing. I'm using some ink blending brushes here. These are brushes that I only use with my dye inks and in a little while I'll be using some oxide inks and I'm using different brushes for them. You don't want to mix your brushes for dye inks and oxide inks. Oxides have a dye pigment blend and you don't want to get that pigment um, ink onto dye based ink pads. Uh, so I do use two separate ink blending brushes for this. 
once I'm done ink blending that background, I can take that piece off of the floor and I can do the ink blending there. Now I'm gonna take that piece off and then I'm going to take my pieces that cover that wall piece and um, cover that completely while I do my ink blending for my floor. Now, if it was just doing the ink blending for the floor, you could just take a straight piece of paper and do it that way. But because I want to do the ruler after this and the mice after this, I'm gonna have to put these pieces on anyways. So I might as well put them on now and have them on this piece while I'm doing the pieces that I don't want to get that ink onto that background. Now you'll see these masking sheets have uh, backing to them and it's split in half in between. So I'll typically take the backing off of one half, put it down and then take the backing off of the second half just so that I don't touch the backing quite as much with my fingers. These have a, a post-it note type stick to them. And one thing that affects anything adhesive is the more you touch it, the less sticky it is. So I try avoid touching it as much as possible. So for the floor, I use Lost Shadow as well as Hickory Smoke. And with all my colors, I do the lightest color first, and then I go in with a darker color and do the shading. So the shading here is gonna go right on, right below the mice basically where they're standing. Once I have that area done, I can take my ruler part and this is where I have to take my scissors and I have to cut that ruler off of the pencil tip as well as the mouse. And this is where I realized that I probably should have done a little bit more cutting before time and I wouldn't have to peel these up and touch them and um, have to cut them now. But I did want to leave this part in there just so that if you are doing this technique with something that you want to do some ink blending to color them, that you know that it the more you cut and do those pieces at the beginning, the less you'll have to do it in the middle of the project. So all I'm doing here, I took the little mouse as well as the tip of the pencil off. I'm cutting that ruler off and then I will cut the tip of the pencil um, apart from the yellow part of the pencil, if that makes any sense. Once I have that cut off, I'll put the mouse right back down as well as the pencil. And then it's basically like a puzzle. You're taking little bits of the puzzle off while you're doing the ink blending in that area and then putting those puzzle pieces back in when um, you want to block that area off. So for the ruler, I'm using old paper distress ink and blending that in there. I'm just doing a really light coat. I want to have it colored, but I want to make sure that it's not the same color as the mouse, as well as the fact that I want it a different color than the wall. Now, as I'm working on this, if there's something that I don't mention, a supply that I use that I don't mention, or one that you missed the name of, I have all of this information in the description box below. So now that we're doing the pencil tip, and for the tip, I did some scattered straw. For the eraser, I did fired brick. And then for the little metal things that are on the end of the pencil, I did some hickory smoke. And then the yellow part of the pencil is fossilized amber. And this is the one part of this whole project that had a lot of little pieces to it because the pencil kind of has a few different colors to it. And I wanted to make sure that it looked like a pencil. I didn't want to just do it one color and have it not really look like a pencil. So now we are on to the mice and I wanted them to have a little bit of a different look from the background and the other elements. So I'm going to be using some Distress Oxide inks here. And this is where I use different blending tools that are meant for oxide that I save for my oxide inks. For the mouse bodies, I'm using Walnut Stain. And then for their little noses, ears, uh, hands and feet and tail. I'm using tattered rose with a little bit of saltwater taffy just to darken some of the areas up. I have regular blending brushes to do most of this and then once I'm done I take a detailed blending brush with that walnut stain and just get a little bit more shading in some of the areas. I found that some of it was lost when I went in with the tattered rose and I lost some of the darkness so easy enough to go back in there with a detailed brush and you can get more of that detail right in there. These blending brushes are quite big for this particular job. So you could use the detail brushes for these um, colors as well. Frankly, I just didn't think of it at the time. And in the end, it works out well because I use this detail brush for the walnut stain and getting some of those shadows back in there and some of the darkness back in there. And then you'll see once I pull my mask off, I also use it to kind of fuzz out the lines of the mouse because they're fur the solid 
um, precise lines that masking creates kind of doesn't work with them. So I soften that up a little bit. Now, because I was using oxide inks and I used them right over top of the glossy accents on the eyes, I took a Q-tip that was a little bit moist and just cleaned those off just to get that glossiness from the eye again and it comes off of them really quite easily. For some of the small masking pieces, the tweezers are a lot easier to pull them off and get into the corners and just grab them a little bit. And here's where you see that the mouse shape are a little bit too precise, as well as the fact that there's one little sliver on the larger mouse's body that um, there's a white sliver there. So by using this distress brush, I can fuzz out those lines again, make them a little bit more fuzzy since they do have fur and fill in that area. And if there's another area that you have that white line that you don't really like, these detail brushes are really make it really easy to fill those areas in. And they also come in a few different sizes. I'm using the largest size here, but there's a smaller one that you could use for smaller areas. Now, I love the effect and the result of coloring with those inks, but by using the oxides on top of the mice, I lost some of the um, details. They're just, I mean, you can see it there, but it's not quite as precise as when it was stamped. So a simple solution is putting that piece back in the misty. I never removed my stamp from there, and I can restamp it with that stays on ink. There are a couple sentiments in this set. So I'm using the You Did It stamp in the center of the card, in the middle of the card. There's also a congratulations, and you could even use them combined. Do congratulations, you did it, or you did it, congratulations. That would work as well. I just wanted one of them, so I just stamped it in the center of the card, right on the card base. And I used the Misty so that if I didn't get a nice precise look there, I could easily stamp it again. I'm using some Barely Art Glue to glue everything together. And I chose a nice peachy color that coordinates with the mouse nose, ears, hands, and tail, etc., to frame it. Now I kept this card very, very simple, but I really love the look that ink blending to color in those areas gives to this card. It just creates a nice soft and smooth look to it. And it's really quite easy to do. Like I said before, the hardest part is cutting those parts out, but it's a fun and different way to color in your images. And those masking sheets make it so easy to do this way. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate you being here. I hope you have a fantastic day.